Hey guys, welcome to a Saturday morning on a noisy road. Sunland Boulevard in Sunland, California, cultural capital of the world. Tammy and I are out on a guitar buying trip and guess what? We drove by this lot and right next to that noisy truck is a, oh, what do you know, a chick flick teal garbage chair. Hey, Tammy. And we found this K guitar, and you're going to see this one. In fact, you're seeing it right now in the episode called Comb Over, Do Over. And why do we call it Comb Over, Do Over? Well, if you look close, somebody tried to fix this guitar using a man's pocket comb. So we're going to put it on the bench. Tammy's going to do a little bit with the three strings that are left on it right now and kind of show you what's happening. Oh, that is so beautiful. If traffic wasn't by going by, it would be awesome. But the comb over, do over. All right, guys, this has been a great week. Um, we're fixing to look at what I got in here, but I want to tell you, um, during this week, y'all know Gallia Volt, right? Gallia Volt. I'm going to give you a link to music below. There's a pre-order on her album that's coming out. Anyway, Gallia played a uh, live television show in Belgium, and uh, Mississippi license plate guitar I had she has two of mine. One of them is on the front cover of her new vinyl, which comes out. And again, I'm going to give you a link below. Don't you hate dead airspace? Um, but anyway, I shipped another one out to Belgium, and she used that uh, guitar to play a song called Esperito Pagado. And it's on the album, and uh, the cameraman really liked the guitar, I could tell. And while I'm messing with this, we just saw Reverend Peyton's Big Damn Band do a live show out of Brown County, Indiana. And uh, I've made Reverend a guitar or two. And um, also made Breezy a washboard. It was polka dotted, and I saw it in the video. Hey, thanks, Breezy. Shout out to Breezy. So I'm going to give you links to both of their music down below. Reverend Peyton, Big Damn Band. And... Gallia Volt. Now let's open this up. This is a high point of the week. Ooh, look at that. Ooh, it's the matchbook of the episode. I've already picked that, but look look at this. Well, if I would take it out of its case, you probably could, so let's do that. Slip this around. i got a stand over here on my production set. Make sure that doesn't fall over. Look, original case. Missing the handle, but there we go. Get that out of the way. I know this makes my episodes homey for y'all. But let's get the next stand down. And uh, lay this thing out again. Never forget when you're working on wood guitars and arch tops. Keep these bean bags around in places where they will help you. Okay. You don't want to scratch stuff up and make it any more junkier than it really is but let me move the camera around here look at this poppy oh clean one owner all right i'm calling this one the comb over do over and here's why let's zoom in am i going to get the right zoom this time oh yeah look at that batting a thousand would you look at what's right there? Can you see right there? There's a part of a bridge, and then there's a comb underneath there, a pocket comb. A pocket comb. Can you believe it? Okay, guys, before I forget, this is a perfect time for the matchbook of the episode. Cranks Lather Cream. I want to point out something. K-R-A-N-K. Don't forget that. And I want to point out here, see, this is how you spell cream. K-R-E-E-M. That is the correct spelling. 
Just because some garage band came out in the 60s and spelled it different does not change the correct spelling. So, why is this the matchbook of the episode? Well, because there's a comb there. So, why don't you take some of that cranks lather cream and do something with that hair on your face and then drag this comb across your head because i'm not going to need it anyway i'll lend it to y'all form a line and you can drag that comb across your head and make your mama proud of you finally matchbook of the episode cranks lather cream okay guys i've got the camera angle where i think it's going to work best and i've got glare coming in from everywhere and that's just how it is and Always remember, don't forget. Always remember, don't forget, brilliant. Remember, I'm the one that taught you how to spell cream right. Don't forget that. We are going to get out our yardstick, our fancy Beverly Hills, California yardstick there. And um, it's going to come in handy in a minute here. But we're going, to, we're going to take off this comb bridge. This is a first. I've never seen this. I actually am coveting this because I, I think it would have been cool if I would have been the one to think about this or think of this. But I am going to put a piece of tape there. And I am going to put a piece of tape right here. Okay. Then I'm going to take a straight edge and my fancy rocket science pencil. I'm going to put it against this bridge the way it says. Put a mark there. And I'm going to put a mark there. I'm going to come around to the other side of the bridge. Put it there. Mark there. Mark there. Now, the distance between the mark here and here and here and here halfway is where the crown of this bridge is sitting and that's going to be important for me to know. Also it's going to be important for me to know what the scale of this guitar is which means I'm going to come down to the 12th fret here from the nut which needs a little repair by the way and I'm going to take my piece of tape here. You know what I think I'm going to use binding tape because it shows up better for y'all. Anyway back of the nut top of the 12th fret that mark is right there that's where the middle of the 12th fret is the crown of the fret so now I'm going to go from the crown of that fret very top in the middle and I'm going to say that this bridge has been off quite a bit which is probably why they could never get into tune so we're going to need this to be that lines up with the back of the bridge exactly where the back of the bridge is I'm looking at it trust me and if you do that I got some land for you to buy in Florida or someplace like that shout out to George Mitchell anyway so I'm going to take this and make sure that I put that a mark right there and right there. Now, that is where the bridge will go. Does that mean anything? Kind of. It kind of puts you in the ballpark. But now I can do the very unpleasant thing that I hate to do and loosen off these strings. And then we're going to find out what's hiding under the comb. All right, there you go. I got the strings off and I'm bleeding. You know, I go to great danger for y'all. This kind of reminds me of that show, Mutual Omaha Wild Kingdom, when I was a little kid. There was this old man on there named Marlon Perkins. And Marlon Perkins would be sitting in the canoe. Let's get these strings off here. Marlon Perkins would be sitting in the canoe, in the native-built canoe, drinking Lipton iced tea or something. And he'd be saying stuff like, is my assistant Jim battles the alligator and then it would show Jim over there getting tore up from the floor up anyway Jim ended up having his own show after Marlon finally kicked it uh, but yeah that's kind of what this is I'm going I'm like the Jim of this and you're like the Marlon Perkins and y'all sitting at home in your easy chair and 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 learning from my 
physical injuries. I'm, I'm fixing to get tore up here. Maybe I need to use a little bit of this tape right here. I really don't want to unwind these right now because I can use them again for a second. Ooh, look at this. This is like some Texas oil field rigging right here, son. Check this out, Worm. Anyway, there we go. I think I might want to put a little bit underneath this trapeze in case it drops down. So, we've got this marked where it was. Now, why am I doing this? Well, I want to put a real bridge on here as much as I hate to. And I look at that. Ooh, there's a lot of difference there. Anyway, I keep changing the camera angle here in hopes that you can see what's actually going on. So we've got this new bridge. It hasn't anything done to it. It hasn't been sanded down. It hasn't been notched or anything. But the point of the matter here is that this bridge, this piece of bridge, you can see that there's holes in it. It was a floating bridge like this one. The base is gone. The thumb screws are gone. There's a comb here. Now, the difference between this bridge the height of the center of this bridge and where the strings crown on this one is that much I just did this in you guys' world that's about a half inch in the metric world that's about 12 millimeters or half a centimeter that's a lot why would somebody do that well now that we got the strings off we can look remember I have marked where the sides of this bridge are up here and here. Now, I've done this ahead of time, so I know, I know what, what's going to happen here, but stick with me. We remove this, and you can see where the comb was because there's a dust line right there. You see it? See that dust line right there? And if you look close and I move this away, there is a shadow right there. You can see the shadow line. There's the bottom there's the top. Something used to be there and it wasn't that comb. That something was a bridge just like this because if you look right here, look at that. That shadow is exactly what would be produced by being under something like this for years. Now, if I put that on there, guess where the center of the shadow is? Yeah, right there where the crest of the uh, where the crest of the bridge would be. Now, why would somebody need to lower the bridge that much? Well, here's my suspicion. When you start cranking this up with heavy strings, well, these things had heavy strings. You start cranking it up a little too much, your neck joint cuts loose. When your neck joint cuts loose, remember, I've talked about this a million times. When your neck cuts loose here, it bows, and that means the strings start coming up around the 12th fret, which is the lower part of the board. So I'm going to turn this over now, and we're going to have a look at what the neck joint looks like. Okay, we got a little light on the subject there. Thank you for Geely. We're talking about right there. Oh, there's a gap there. That got big enough to put this in. Oh yeah, plenty. It's sloppy. There's no strings on here. There's no string tension. You know what? It's so sloppy. I can put this coin from the chicken ranch outside of LaGrange, Texas, which is very near Dallas where this thing came out of a junk shop. You know what I'm talking about. Anyway, I can take this chicken ranch coin and I can put it in there. Look at that. This neck is cut loose. If I string it up the way I usually do, this thing is going to pop right off there. So, we all just learned a big lesson. So, what are we going to do with this thing? Um, well, the first thing we're going to do is be happy we didn't pay too much for it. Next, we're going to be happy I made that video about buying cheap arch tops. Remember that one? I'll give you a link to it right up there, right about now. And um, when I buy these things and I come in with an offer, I'll send the people that are selling this stuff a link to that so they can kind of get an idea of what they got. So, the good news about this is I don't have a lot into it. And 
There's a wooden post that goes right there. Is that a wooden post? No, it's the V part of the neck. So, I can take this, heat it up with a heat gun, work the hide glue loose. I've told you a million times that's why people use hide glue because it's heat activated. I can pop the neck off of this thing. I can do some shaving work here and calculate the difference between how high the strings are on the frets versus how much this is offset or whatever. Or I can just heat it up, pull it in. Remember the video I did called $3 Neck Reset? Remember that one? There's a link to it right up there right about now. But... I can heat this up, I can put some glue in there, and then I can do a poor man's neck reset by drilling a hole right here and screwing this in to the block of wood that holds this all together. This is never going to be a high dollar instrument. It certainly will not be worth uh, three, four, five hundred dollars like everybody thinks they're worth. And I may do a Troy Murrah on it, which is to put a set of shelf brackets right here that bolt this down and make it okay and then maybe I can put some kind of fancy pickup on it put something to do with Texas on it where it came from and uh, match book the neck but unfortunately you're going to see this one the other zoom out please you're going to see this one hit the closet for a bit and it will come out back to you at some point in the future you'll remember it as the comb over junk pile because it certainly as people use a comb to hide a comb over this comb was hiding a serious problem in this guitar anyway appreciate the people that i got it from shout out to mommy in dallas texas um you did good and your daughter did good dealing with me so y'all should be proud of yourself you got a you got a good family all right guys the comb over do over is going to go back in its original chipboard case here for a little bit and it will rear its ugly head again at some point in the future um there's actually some good news here in this the closer you look but you see there's a gap right there you see some air underneath that fretboard right there you see that dot of glue up there and some dripping hide glue that's all hard here Somebody's actually tried to do something with this before and that gap right there has something to do with this. And I don't think this is a tendon joint neck set in here. So, um, yeah, there's some good news in there. We'll explore that when we drag this one back out. But the bottom line here is always remember when you're looking at these things, Something wrong with the bridge is a warning sign. These shadows will tell you everything. And always watch your neck. Watch your neck. Unless you're ready to start um, junk piling uh, neck resets with shelf brackets or you can figure out what to do. You get $250, $300 into this. If you take this to a luthier, they're going to want four or $500 to set the neck. All of a sudden, you've got a $700 guitar for one that unless... I hot rodded it up and made it into folk art is not worth anything near that. So let the comb be your guide. Now would you please go wash your face and comb your hair and I'll see you next time.